<laughs> All right, welcome back to KM6 LYW Radio, the show about amateur radio or ham radio, reimagining radio in the information age. Hey, today we have a new digital interface that connects your radio to your Raspberry Pi. It's the Toad's Digital Interface by Steve, a KM9G. Let's check it out this time on KM6 LYW Radio. <laughs> Keeps going. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Yeah, free bumper music. All right, let's check it out. Toad's digital interface. So Steve and Jonathan kind of split this thing into two parts. So you have what's called like the tinker board. It's called Toad's digital interface. And that just gives you the raw pinouts for like a CM108 chip here. Okay, it's audio in, audio out, and a push to talk. So if you wanted to twist together a transistor and a resistor like, like the, the Natives Americans had to do hundreds of years ago, you can still twist those wires together and do it that way. Um, but if you don't want to do it that way, we've got a daughter board that fits on top of this. And it has a DIN 6 connector. Um, with a real standard pinout. So you just make a cable that hooks up to your dual band rig, your HT for audio in, audio out, ground and push to talk. Um, the daughter board uh, really makes this impressive because you get these trim pots for audio in, audio out, uh, left and right audio, uh, switch for the 96 or 1200 baud pin, and a, a carrier operated squelch on this board as well. So the daughter board is like the ultimate uh, radio interface that you put on top of the tinker board. Um, so there is some soldering required. Uh, don't let this scare you. I mean, I'm not the best solderer in the world. Just get a hot iron with a good tip, you know, like a Weller soldering iron. Uh, make sure you put some sort of weight on it and to make sure that header is uh, pushed flush and plumb and square between the two boards and go ahead and solder that on both sides. Um, I, you know, I'm kind of covering up my soldering job because I didn't, I didn't do the best job in the world. Um, you also want some spacers here so you don't like pinch it and snap it, you know, snap these boards off, snap that header. So get some of these little brass spacers and some screws. And then uh, this is what it looks like. Oh, I guess uh, you guys can see my soldering job. I, it's, you know, it works. There's continuity. Uh, but this is just kind of a close up of what the, uh, the board looks like. I don't know, it's probably a better view of the slider switches here. Uh, the, it, this shouldn't say mute, according to Steve. This should say COS or something. We've got high and low, so it's a three position switch. And the, the 9600 baud thing just selects a different pin on your radio. Now there's some controversy about using the, the discriminator pin um, because a lot of people who are receiving you or, or vice versa have a de-emphasis and they're expecting an emphasis. So I don't know, experiment with 90, the 90, the discriminator output or 1200 baud output on your radio. Um, and this lets you do that. That's what's so cool about this device. All right, so let's, and it's USB-C by the way, uh, to connect to your Raspberry Pi and then a DIN 6 to connect to your radio. Uh, when you're when this is all put together, go ahead and put a little tape under there um, just to keep it from shorting out on whatever you put it down. I, I, I always use these beer, beer coasters for all of my pie projects, but go ahead and put some tape on there just to be sure. Um, and this is what it looks like upright here. Um, this is just a great little device. You can see the DIN 6 a little better. Um, so we've got it operating over here on the shelf. So let's just see this work. I've already cabled this up. I've got the DIN 6 cable that I manufactured with the ferrite bead on there. Please, please, please put a ferrite bead on your, your PS2 or DIN 6 cable. Um, if if RF gets on the USB cable or this DIN 6, um, you're going to have a bad time, okay? It's going to, like, lock up on first transmit. You see that all the time if RF gets into the USB cable. Um, so go ahead and put these ferrite beads on there. They are mandatory for all HTs and especially uh, this Beofang. Can you believe this Beofang is only $16 now? And this Raspberry Pi is 18 bucks. And we'll talk about Steve's device here in a second. We'll, we'll check out the temporary, uh, temporarily offline uh, website. So let's let's try this out. Let's uh, let's goof off here. Let's uh, gonna geek out. We've got the Digipi up here, and right now it's in APRS TNC and iGate mode. And uh, we've got APRS Web Chat enabled. Uh, go out to digipi.org to get the SD card for this Digipi here. You stick it in there and you initialize it. Um, on this page. Uh, when you are initializing this and you're using the Toads D DI, um, go ahead and select either AIOC, depending on which version of DigiPi you have, select AIOC or select Toads DI, okay? Uh, future per versions of DigiPi will have all of this uh, spelled out. So that's all you do, select Toads DI and then do your initialization. Then once DigiPi is yours, 
and you can fire up the web chat services. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go to that right here. In fact, I think I have it right here. And then you can do cool stuff like APRS operations. That's what this does. So we're on an APRS frequency, 14439. And you can send like a, a message to a call sign called SMS. And we'll say wide one path. And uh, you can put a phone number here like, you know, 8675309. Yeah, I'm familiar with that one. I'm not going to give away my phone number because I have an alias for my number. And say, this is a test from RF to my phone. Do that. And I'm going to say send. And you... And you can see the systems going wild here. The Raspberry Pi is communicating with the. <laughs> there's the, there's the message already. <laughs> that was that was fast. Uh, so the Raspberry Pi is communicating with the uh, the Toad's digital interface, and which is through the USB cable, and then it goes through the PS2 cable, which is plugged into the, the K connectors on the side of your of this. Uh, Baofeng. You can you can make a cable for any radio as long as you have audio in, audio out, push to talk, and ground. And so that's exactly what just happened. So we're receiving and sending. Um, I sent a message to my phone just now. In fact, I can go ahead and reply to that. Um, I can say, uh, I don't know, type it out. This is a reply. Now this is going out over uh, the cellular networks, okay? So this is a reply, sending that. And this will come through, back through the radio, back through the Toad's DI and into the Raspberry Pi and make it to the, the web interface for DigiPi here. So DigiPi kind of turns your radio into a local website. And sure enough, we see, here it is, this is a reply. And this just came from the cellular network back to RF. So totally cool. We've got APRS stuff working. If you want to get really advanced, like APRS is like the beginner drug, right? Just to get you hooked into ham radio. Once you get into that, you're going to probably be, it's going to escalate quickly all the way up to AX.25 networking, node services, bulletin boards. Uh, we've got a vibrant network up here in, uh, in Northern California. And I just enabled the AX.25 node. Um, you can see that on the screen there. And then we can go like to AX call and call like a bulletin board. I've got one called Cool. In fact, if you want to see another video on how to build a bulletin board, I've got another video on that. I'm just going to connect to Cool. Actually, what I need to do is switch over to 145050. That's our frequency that we use here in Northern California for bulletin board or what we call keyboard to keyboard. Uh, we have some mailbox services there, and uh, this is just a, a DigiPi running on the hill. Um, I can actually switch this over so you can hear the obnoxious sound. So here it is. We've just logged into a bulletin board called Cool using DigiPi. We're using Steve's uh, DI and, and a Baofeng, and we can do all kinds of cool stuff like, you know, have, you know, have chat rooms, connect to other nodes. There's NetROM, there's routing. Um, we can even play Zork. Remember Zork? I put a video game on here. <laughs> you can hear the packets. I put a video game on here just so it would be some kind of reward, you know, for getting your system up on in the node network using AX.25 network. So you guys remember Zork, right? You know, we're west of house. You're standing in open field west of a white house with a boarded front door as a small mailbox. Open mailbox, right? Totally useless use of bandwidth, right? But keep in mind that, you know, for an Aries or an emergency kind of thing, this could be like a spreadsheet. You know, where's power? Where are people? Where's food? Where's fuel? Um, you know, it could be an emergency service on your bulletin board. So today we're playing Zork, but, uh, you know, someday we could use this for a much more serious purpose. And I can do uh, read leaflet. And we're playing Zork over ham radio with DigiPi and the Toad's digital interface. So Zork <laughs> is a game of venture, dan danger, and low cunning. Uh, the humor on this game is great. Anyways, that, that's the bulletin board. Um, I don't want to get too deep into how we can use DigiPi, but be rest assured that all of the packet modes on DigiPi work perfectly with the Toad's digital interface. Actually, I need to do quit here. If you want to quit the node, you, you hit buy. Yeah, yes. I have zero points and two moves. I get it. You can actually save your game as your call sign, too. Um, so that is the DigiPi Operating Toads. Let's talk about the uh, Steve's site here. Uh, so go to temporarily temporarilyoffline.com. Um, and we see the two devices right here on his homepage. So we've got the, the two boards. We've got the digital interface, right? And it's $31. Uh, I'm sure you can get a discount. I'll put a link to it in, in the notes uh, so you can just 
purchase this directly. Um, in fact, Steve, I think, has some um, affiliate kind of thing going on there, too. So you're helping everyone out by, by buying these things, really. these This is handmade equipment, okay? This is not some sort of corporate deal. These are great guys making great products. And the other product is the Toad's Daughter Board, if you don't want to solder to the pinouts on the interface. And that just, that just gives you the DIN 6 connector, all the, the LEDs for transmit, all the, the switches that we just talked about. So get both of those, okay? And we can look at them here. Here. Um, this is kind of a, I don't know if this is a mechanical drawing of the interface. I don't know. It helps you, it helps you kind of see what's actually on this board. Um, the three LEDs are cool. Put LEDs on your DigiPies, guys. I think they're cool. And then here's the daughter board. Uh, mechanical drawing for that. And this is the, the, the DIN 6 down here on the bottom. Um, let me make this smaller. Now there is the, the pinouts here. So this is the... Uh, the, the the DIN six right so you need to you need to connect your radio's ground to this one you're pushed to talk to this pin and use the 1200 baud for receive audio and then there's the data transmit audio over here so and and make sure you get the male female orientation I can't tell you how many times I've done this and had like reversed it in my mind so so Steve's got them both laid out here so you just you just can't get it wrong so hey uh, km9g Steve thank you so much for uh, for doing this uh, this is fantastic we, uh, all the patrons here have access to the the digipi at digipi.org um, you can download that image that we just used here today um, there's probably too many to scroll through here but uh, there's so many data users out there now and the reason I know that is because everyone who's on this list right here has access to the digipi SD card image. Let me pull that up at digipi.org. So anything in the Patreon bucket gets you access to this uh, SD card, okay? And you can download it right here. And so Digipi gives you access to every data mode there is um, via your web browser or any Wi-Fi device or your phone. So everything we just did just now, you can actually do on your phone because all you really need is a Wi-Fi web browser. Now in the field, it becomes its own hotspot. It's pretty cool. So you don't even need a Wi-Fi router if you don't want to. It actually uses Bluetooth if you want. Um, if you wanted to use like APRS Droid or Wode. Uh, you don't need to know a Linux command line to get this up and running, guys. There is an initialized link on the DigiPi homepage when you first boot it where you enter your call sign, your WinLink password, APRS, latitude, longitude, grid square. All the stuff that you should know as a good ham radio operator. And you can select your little screen too. I know this is the small screen. And there's, we, we've got a a big screen for this also you can see it up there um, so select the screen that you want to put on there of course it works with hdmi if you really want but get the little screen because it's so cool and it works with uh, all kinds of rigs like if you have a usb cable or a usb hamlib radio like the icom 705 honestly you don't need any of this stuff you just need a usb cable or raspberry pi and the digipi sd card image but if you want to use a dual band rig like this uh this baofang or maybe you got a yesu ht or a yesu 2980 that's my favorite mobile rig to use with this get the uh get the temporarily offline toads di device uh, to draw go ahead and drive those radios because they don't have usb cables right so the the toads device kind of adds a usb port to your dual band rig like your bail thing. So that's, yeah, that's probably a good way to think of it. So DigiPi gives you all access to all those packet modes, the bulletin board. Uh, this is an example of the, uh, you can do all the HF modes, WSJTX, it's all there. They all, all that stuff runs on a web browser. You can run on a big pie, a little pie. Uh, a lot of examples, Linux node services. Um, there's WSJTX running in your web browser, right? You could be in the other room operating WSJTX on your phone with your rig and all that stuff here in the shack. Um, you're in the living room hanging out with the XYL, uh, XYL watching TV. She thinks you're getting some good quality time in, but you're just poking at your phone. You're really operating amateur radio. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me today. And thanks to Steve, KM9G. I really appreciate it. Um, this is a fantastic device, really making data modes more accessible to the amateur radio community. Hey, my name is Craig. I'm in California. Uh, amateur radio call sign KM6LYW. And I'm clear.